Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today I'll have guests on from the Troop County Sheriff's Office. I will have on Lieutenant Chad Mann, the Public Information Officer, Crime Prevention. Also, we'll have Spotlight on Education with Tina Duckett. So you want to make sure you come back and join those interviews in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have on from the Troop County Sheriff's Department, Lieutenant Chad Mann. Chad, yes, welcome to the show. Well, thanks. Thanks for having us well, on again. It's well, you know, it's always back. a pleasure to sit down with you because uh, I know that we were out at the lake a week or so ago That's and right. you out there. We did some grilling and some eating and some oh, other things. Oh, that was so much fun. It and was a lot of fun. So filling. Yeah, uh, You know, we had great weather, too. It really did. And with the backdrop of the lake and everything, and I hope everybody got out there and enjoyed it uh, to the fullest. Fun. That's right. Well, you know, you know, we're in the summer months here, Chad, and, and you know, the kids are out of school. Uh, people are going to start vacationing, mm -hmm. and, and the homes are going to be, you know, kind of left unoccupied for a while. So we want to kind of, uh, again, give our viewing audience some tips that they can take to, you know, prevent themselves from being victim of burglaries and things of that nature, or, right. or roadside uh, incidents, things like that. And I know that because that's you, the last thing that you think of while you're on a trip. That's or right. You're out there at the lake and you're motorhome having fun right that's right and then you fun. come in and and, uh, and you see our, everything in disarray well and i know that you're the uh, public information officer talk that's to right. us a little bit about what your duties and roles are if you don't sure mind. i've been at the sheriff's office for about four years and two of those have been spent in public information and crime prevention so for sheriff turner uh, i'll put out the press releases for him make sure that if there's any kind of event that he can't make it to that i'm there to tell the public what's going on and let them know of ways to protect themselves with uh you know, safety programs that the sheriff's office offers or things that they can do inside the community to help themselves. Absolutely. You know, speaking about the sheriff, he was out there cooking too at the, he was. At the lake. You know? I was Chef Turner. That's right, Chef Turner. Right? <laughs> and you know what, I must say, um, the hot dogs and hamburgers were quite tasty. He always does a terrific job cooking. You know. Yeah, yeah we got to get him in the kitchen more often, but it's so often that you find when you go looking for the sheriff, he's in court, he's helping somebody on, uh, you know, things that happen, you know, in their, in their lives. That's right. That's right. And, you know, we just want to thank him and also thank you for all the things that you all sure. do for the sure. citizens Our of Troop pleasure. County. You know, and, and you're talking, we're talking about summer safety tips, and a lot of these things are just kind of common sense things, but there really again, are. you know, the more you hear it, the more it becomes your nature or your habit to do. Mm -hmm. What's some of the simple things that people can do? They're getting ready to travel and, and they're getting ready to leave a home. Just go ahead and right. tell some of the things. And it's good things. to know, too, some of the programs that are out there that are offered through law enforcement, they're absolutely free. From the sheriff's office, Sheriff Turner has these uh, operation identification booklets. Okay. They're inventory booklets where you can actually record your model numbers, your serial numbers. Uh, you can record a description of your rifles, your jewelry, uh -huh. um, anything that you find as a valuable in your home mm -hmm. that someone would, uh, if they walked inside your home, say, hey, I'd like to have that. Huh. Okay. You definitely want to record those things. So if you have a video camera handy, digital camera, take some snapshots of it and then put them onto a disc save that the inventory booklet put them in a fireproof safe somewhere put them in a safe deposit box but have them handy so just in case anything does happen we have a great place to start an investigation okay and it's so important you say in starting that investigation because a lot of times when you know something is taken from a home the serial numbers, model numbers are probably the only way that you can kind of get some right. lead on it, right? Right. And then a lot of times, you know, something we see the detective shows on television, they come in, they want to dust for fingerprint. How, I guess, how frequently can you pick up prints when someone home has well, been burglarized? Oftentimes, um, criminals are opportunists. They look for any kind of opportunities to get into your home quickly and get out just as quickly. Mm -hmm. So often they don't think about the little things that we can pick up on as evidence. You know, uh, little fragments of hair, maybe some um, uh, gloves or something like that that would be left behind to represent someone's DNA. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it doesn't happen often that we find those kind of things. When we do find them, it, it's great for us and great for you. Mm -hmm. So we kind of hope for them, but you can't always count and depend on them. That's why an operation identification booklet is great. It's free. Uh, you don't have to pay anything for them. You can pick them up at the sheriff's office or give us a call at 706-883-1616. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad to bring you one out. Okay. But go ahead and record those things and have them handy. So just in case we have to start an investigation, there it is. And uh, people you know, they don't think about that. That's right, that's right. And, and then, like I say, a lot of these things are common sense things, but when mm. you're getting ready to go on vacation, get all excited about the destination that you're going to, especially if it's a location that you hadn't been to in quite right. some time, and you know, may, may uh, uh, forget some of the things. That's right, and, and people don't realize <coughs> property crime is one of the most 
unsolvable crimes there is because usually people are looking to uh, when they're opportunists and they come into your home and they take you take your property mm -hmm. the thieves will actually turn around and try and make a quick profit off of those so they'll take them to a pawn shop they'll either do that or take them to someone that they know who's looking for that same piece of mm -hmm. you know valuables mm -hmm. that they're that you have right because they know that they can turn a quick buck that way Absolutely. so they do it yeah. and um, you know it, it's hard to recover that kind of thing it when is. it changes hands so often and so fast that's right and you know we're talking about that too uh, neighborhood watch programs and I know inside the city we have the neighborhood <laughs> watch programs how prevalent is the neighborhood watch program in the county and how can people that may not be a part of a neighborhood watch become uh, sure. part of one well I tell you um, the neighborhood watch program has been going on since the sheriff took office he kind of reinvigorated uh, the neighborhoods got them charged up and started doing the neighborhood watches like in the Rosemont community and spread that so all, uh, throughout the county but um, we find that as people have some of those issues addressed like burglary um, entering auto and things like that that they start dropping off as far as coming to the neighborhood watch programs because they got their problem solved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't stop going just because you have your problem solved. Right. What you would like to do and keep doing is keep coming to those uh, informational neighborhood watch meetings because what we do is we pass along statistics and information to let you know what's happening to your neighbors and once your neighbors know what's going on with you and you know what's going on with them you can keep a better eye on them and help us know what's going on in your neighborhood because after all you are our eyes and ears out there that's right you know and and you know we think you know we know that the troop county sheriff <laughs> department and the police department you know pretty much spread out and mm -hmm. they can't be everywhere at all times no nope. but the citizens in those neighborhoods can and they know right. the various cars that may not necessarily belong there. And, and we have like some that. vigilant neighbors who actually <laughs> in the in the neighborhood watch programs will get out with video cameras and so on and so forth. And we even haven't had an incident in Florida, not related to anything mm -hmm. that happened in Troop County, where you know some of those took it a little bit further. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, your neighborhood watch is yours. That's right. And what you should do is report anything you see to law enforcement through 911. Of course, take your notes. Mm -hmm. If you do a video camera, do it from a distance inside of a safe location and you don't want to get too close to the perpetrator or somebody that you think is doing a suspicious activity because after all it's suspicious that's right and it could turn into dangerous or absolutely. hazardous for Ab you absolutely it's a very good tip now we we kind of secure in your home of course we know the other things you know stop the mail or have right. a neighbor pick it up so on and so forth leave a light on on timers. that's right um, good ideas great you know and, and now we're getting ready to get on the road what are some traveling tips that you all can give us a uh, chat well <laughs> let me tell you is if you're hitting the road in any way shape or form have everything planned out before you even leave the ho home your house mm -hmm. um, make sure that you know your route everyone is awake and alert when you leave the home and if you want to take shifts driving that's fine that's great but make sure someone uh, either a trusted family member trusted friend knows the route that you're going to take okay. and that they have your <coughs> contact information so if anything does happen to you while you're gone and no one hears from you we have a point of contact or an emergency contact that we can get in touch with and if you are leaving the home make sure that you have just the necessary things you don't want to take too many financial transaction cards and chances are you're probably not going to use them all yes. and uh, if you do take a gas card an ATM card and some cash make sure that you keep them in a good safe location you don't want to leave anything mm -hmm. laying in your vehicle out in the open for an opportunist to seize at just the right time that's right uh, an opportunist because you know it's so uh, you know so important that people realize that crimes of opportunity happen perhaps at the snap of a right. finger that's right know? and um, sometimes they happen while you're walking while you're driving. They can happen at any time. And the thing is, most law-abiding citizens don't plan out a burglary. That's they right. don't plan out someone stealing from them while they're walking down the street. That's right. That's right. So it's good to not only be aware of your surroundings, but travel in groups mm -hmm. of two or more. Great. That's a great idea and suggestion. And too, and you know, with the gas prices these days, you probably come out better on I'm the gas you. calls, right? Carpool. That's, <laughs> That's the right. way to go. Absolutely. Now, I know, Chad, I know you're an avid reader and, and, and you have some other tips there. You were yeah. telling me before we came on that you had found an article about certain <laughs> things that a burglar right. won't tell you, right? I subscribe to Reader's Digest and <laughs> they, from time to time, will uh, feature some good crime information. Mm -hmm. And the most recent thing is things that a burglar will not tell you. Uh -huh. And, you know, it gets you thinking a Along the lines of if 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 I were a thief, this is how I would think. Oh, okay. Of course, I look familiar. I was just in your home cleaning your carpets, painting <laughs> your garage, moving your refrigerator, 
And by the way, while I was in there, I unlatched a window so that I could get in easier later on. <laughs> Next time. Right? Something a burglar would think that you probably would never think of. Absolutely. And if somebody comes up knocking on your door, you might not just you know let them in, but also they'll ask directions. They'll do something simple to get your attention away from what's actually going on, like they're scoping out your house. Hmm. So again, if they ask you for a job, you might want to refuse that That's unless right. you know their credentials are good. That's right. That's right. And then too, you know, you know, bringing that point to light there, Chad, mm -hmm. you know, during the summer months, you do have a lot of times maybe the you know pine straw guys not want to single out anybody right. because a lot of these are, are great companies. They're companies that are uh, in reputable. business, reputable. Uh, but you know grass cutting things of that nature but right. again you just want to check the, 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 the credentials of them right? right and just as you would if you were applying for a job you know they would check your references so why not check theirs absolutely that's a good thing to think of one of the main things that we try and get people to think of right now with social media I mean nowadays it's not like it was when you and I were growing up you mm -hmm. know and we, we were traveling mom and dad took care of everything that's right. but uh, and we had no way to communicate with the people back home until we got where we were going mm -hmm. that's not the case nowadays oh, yeah. my fi Wi-Fi things like that <laughs> that's right. social media is rampant that's right and a lot of folks uh, I know a friend in particular who when he goes places he'll actually use Foursquare to update and let folks know where he's at and what he's doing <laughs> okay yeah. Funny thing, he uh, let's use the Muskogee County Jail. He'll say, I'm at Muskogee County Jail. And, you know, you wouldn't think anything of it, but then it says, with so-and-so, who is a close friend. So, you know, even though you may not use Foursquare as an app on your phone to right. tell folks where you're at, someone else that you're with may be using the same thing. That's and right. you're communicating information that uh, burglars would find That's very, very opportunistic. Absolutely. You know, we, we've seen that, you know, like the Facebook, don't want to single any out once again. But, you know, sometimes, you know, like the superhighway, uh, we say has been a, a blessing and a curse in oh, some yeah. ways, you know. Sure has. Um, you know, by giving out too much information. Right. And as you said, pe persons of, of opportunity sees that to their advantage and to the disadvantage of the uh, uh, homeowner. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we encourage <laughs> folks who have a neighborhood watch program to check out the Troop County Sheriff's Office on Facebook okay. because we'll put out a lot of alert information and uh, good safety tips and things like that that people would find very handy through Sheriff Turner. Well, very good. As we get ready to close out there, Lieutenant, uh, would you go ahead and just give them that uh, address? The um, Sure. It's <coughs> www.facebook.com and then behind the slash you put Troop County Sheriff. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Well, Chad, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you to hear yeah. the wonderful things well, that are going on within us. the we county. Thanks for having us. Well, it's a pleasure. We're going to definitely come back on again and maybe a little bit later on in the, in the summer months, just kind of give us some updates, some stats of things that are happening, okay? Be glad to. All right. Well, thank you very much, Chad. Thanks, Al. Ladies and gentlemen, come on back for more City Week in just a moment as we will be featuring our monthly Spotlight on Education with Tina Duckett. So come on back in just a moment. Hello, you are watching City Week with Spotlight on Education. I'm your host, Tina Duckett, Director of Public Relations for the Troop County School System. We are pleased to share this monthly television program with you, our viewers, as a segment of City Week here on LGTV Channel 19. Our goal is to provide you with Troop County School System news about our students, teachers, programs, events, and activities. We will share a variety of topics each month. Last month, we featured each of our high school's valedictorians. Susie Cha with Callaway High School, Sarah Allred, LaGrange High School, and Michael Bidwell with Troop High School. These students, along with a host of others, graduated this past May and will now start their journey into their careers, post-secondary education, and even the military. We certainly want them to excel and to achieve their dreams. This is our desire for each of our students. So now that school has come to an end and the summer break is up on us, we would like to share with you, our viewers, various strategies that can help children retain some of the information they have learned during the school year. Research says that one of the most important keys to student achievement is parental involvement, or as some say, parental engagement. We have found this to be true as well. With us today to discuss the importance of parental involvement is Troop County School System's Title I Coordinator, Lee Threlkill. Lee will provide us with insight and str into strategies parents and guardians may use to support continued learning and to promote information retention in children throughout the summer months. She will also share with us 
ways parents may become more involved in their child's education. Welcome, Lee. Thank you, Tina. Thank you for having me. Before we begin, it's important to give the audience a little bit of background about Title I. Okay. Um, Title I is the nation's largest federal assistance program for schools. Um, it began in 1965 with the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, and then it was reauthorized with the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. It provides funding for academic services and resources for schools. The key focus is ac academic success for all students. They, the, the goal of Title I is for all students to be on grade level. Okay. Now, what is your role as Title I coordinator? Um, I oversee and monitor the implementation of the Title I program. It ha contains many components. Um, I oversee the CLIP, which is um, short for the Consolidated Local Implementation Plan. We start the year with this. This is Troop County's plan for how we're going to improve student achievement. Um, work with other system employees and we gather all the information we need for this plan and we submit it to the state. And this plan has to be approved before any funding is, is filtered down to the system from the state. Okay. Um, I also oversee the budget for all of our Title I schools um, and our Title I office, the department there at um, Central Office. Um, in our office we have a Title I support specialist, Michelle, Michelle Nation. Um, there's a Title t a 10 law, McKinney-Vento law, I don't know if you're familiar with that, um, but every district in the nation is required to have a homeless liaison on staff um, to work with homeless families. Um, so Michelle serves as our homeless liaison um, and that's a big part of her job. She has other duties as well. Um, we also have, there's a Title I secretary who has also served as a translator for Hispanic families um, in our county. And we have a parental involvement coordinator, which I know we're going to talk about a good bit today. Um, that is Scotty Shepard. Um, she does a fantastic job working with parents to get parents involved with our schools. Um, I also oversee Title I plans, which are a part of the school improvement plan that each school submits at the beginning of the school year. Um, and it, there's a separate Title I section that has to be completed. And we oversee summer extended learning, which would be elementary summer school in our office. And we also oversee professional learning that is funded through Title I. Um, and we are required to have a certain amount of professional learning each year. Oh, okay. It's a lot happening with Title I. Yes, <laughs> there is. Okay, which campuses here in Troop County uh, are Title I schools? Okay, Troop County uses grade span grouping, and at this point we use K-5, so all of our elementary schools are Title I schools. Oh, okay, okay. What are some of the programs and services offered in these schools? Well, to me, the most important resource you can have is people, mm -hmm. personnel. Um, Title I funds in our schools right now help um, fund additional teachers, paraprofessionals, um, family assistants or family liaisons which are in each Title I school to help bridge that connection between home and school. Um, so to me people is the most important thing you can spend your money on. So we do, they, we do fund teachers, paraprofessionals and family assistants. Um, other Title I, additional Title I funds that can be used, they can use for technology. Um, okay. for Promethean boards, computers, mm -hmm. those kind of things if the schools have additional funds. Um, they can also purchase instructional materials and supplies. They can purchase trade books for reading, which we know is so important and I think we're going to talk about yes. in a little while. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just important to remember that Title I is supplemental. It's in addition to what the district provides. It's extra on top. So it's a supplemental um, funds. It's supplemental funds. Okay, and that money comes from the federal government to the state and then the state passes that through. That is, is correct. Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, why is parental involvement so important? We hear about it and I've read about it for years, but can you tell our audience why parental involvement is so sure. important in schools? Well, obviously research shows that the more involved parents are, the better children do. Mm -hmm. um, children want their parents to be involved, whether they'll admit it or not. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very important. Um, when education is valued in the home and the children know it's valued, then the chances are better that they're going to graduate from high school, that they're going to go on to post-secondary. Um, it's, just, it's just crucial. I agree. I agree. So what can parents or guardians do in these summer months with their children to help keep that learning mm -hmm. uh, in place, all that work that they've done <laughs> throughout mm -hmm. the school year right. to keep that retention? Well, and 
as a former language arts teacher, my you know answer to that would be read, read, read. Yes. Um, reading is just so important. Um, if you can get your children involved in the summer reading programs that are you know offered in the community, um, you can have structured time you know, at home for family reading time where everyone sits down and reads at the same time. Um, engage your children in everything. If you're cooking, mm -hmm. let them help you cook, with, you know, using measurements, using the math. Um, if you're going on a trip, let them research your destination. Oh, good you know, you know, just look at, they just make every experience a learning experience. Do you find that's the case also with middle and high? It's a little different with <laughs> middle and high, but it's yeah. so important. I think parents tend to feel that that's the time to back off. That's mm -hmm. the time to let them kind of spread their wings. Mm -hmm. But it is so important for parents to stay involved, especially during those middle school and high school years. I mean, they're still changing and growing and developing, and they need parent involvement. It's very important. And they can probably work with the principals and PTO presidents to mm -hmm. learn ways to stay involved as oh, well. Oh, absolutely. Because I know it's, it's a little different at that mm -hmm. level. They're always trying to figure out, now, how do I right continue to remain involved in the school right but you're absolutely right it is important and they can work with the administrators and the people in the buildings to, to stay involved there are ways yes I'm so. sure okay so you talked about reading a little bit and I've read where 15 minutes a day makes a difference mm -hmm. and I know that there's research but that sounds like such a small amount of time mm -hmm. to spend reading to have any type of impact. So right. tell me, does it really make a difference? Well, I think any time you spend with your children is important, but you know, it depends on the child. I think you have to look at the individual child. Um, if you have younger children, then 15 minutes may be a good starting point. Um, you could spread out your time over the day, you know, read a few minutes here, read a few minutes later, you know, work on something for a few minutes. It just depends on the, on the child and the child's attention span. Um, but I think the main thing to remember is just to make your engagement meaningful. Um, make what the children are doing relevant. Um, talk to them when you're reading. Talk to them about their reading. You know, what are they reading? What happened? You know, it's just important to have those conversations and have that communi communication with the kids. That's very important. And, and I know our local library also has programs mm -hmm. uh, that parents can participate in with their children. Right. So, Lee, is there anything else that you would like to share with us in reference to parental involvement or the Title I program? Um, I would just say get involved. I mean, we just so want parents to be involved. And through Title I, we want input. We want feedback from the parents. We want to know, you know, what do you like? What don't you like? You know, we just want to talk. We want to have that communication and have that open communication constantly. Um, and I think for parents, attend meetings at schools. You know, attend workshops that are offered. Just just be there, get involved. Um, you know, especially, and I want to say with elementary, you know, parents tend to be more involved. Yes. But middle and high, get involved. I think that's just, you know, just make the engagement, make make that connection with home and school. It's just so important. Right. The percentages seem higher at the mm -hmm. elementary level for per parental involvement. And we do know that there are parents out there at the middle and high school level that stay engaged. But right. Uh, we would like to see those percentages increase. Yes, absolutely. Of parents. So, Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. And you all have been watching Spotlight on Education. And we hope to see you next month with various topics about our schools, events, activities, and programs. Thank you for watching.